So, it's just over an hour and a half ago that the junior doctors began yet another strike. They're holding out for that 35%. So they won't budge from that, and that is piling huge pressure on the health service at its most critical time of the year. Health chiefs warn of widespread disruption to patient care, with one A&D already announcing its closure for the duration of the strikes. We're joined now by the Work and Pension Secretary, Mel Stride. Good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. morning. Um, you know, this is, this is such an issue, isn't it? What's it going to take to resolve this because there are fears about the impact because of the timing of this. We know we've got this warning from Age UK about the impact in particular on elderly people. We spoke to the deputy co-chair of the BMA Junior Doctors Committee. Now, she said they will call strikes off today and get back round the table uh, if there's a credible offer. So why can't the government sort this out? Well, look, I, I think you're absolutely right to identify that this is a, a major issue. And I think it's deeply disappointing that the BMA, uh, the junior doctors, have walked away uh, from negotiations right across the rest of the public sector, including within the health service. We've basically come to arrangements. And I think the BMA have always, the junior doctors, held out for this 35%, which is way out of kilter with what has been affordable uh, within the public finances. And I think to walk away at this point, when active discussions were happening right up until they decided to take that decision, when we know that there will be this additional pressure uh, on the health service, is, is really not the responsible thing to okay, do. OK, but it does sound like when they're saying if there's a credible offer, then that sounds like they obviously are open to a lower figure than the 35%. Because when you look at the cost of this so far, £1.4 billion. That's the cost of the 1.2 million appointments mm. and uh, operations that have been cancelled. That money could have been used, couldn't it, to have go towards the pay rise? Mm. Well, there has been an offer on the table of, between, I think, 8 to 10%, depending on exactly what the circumstances of the individual's concerned is. There have been discussions around uh, conditions as well as pay. But the point is that they've walked away from the table and they've been prepared to take a decision rather than to negotiate to go on strike. And that will be at the detriment of the health service. Now, of course, we've put in lots of measures to make sure we're as ready as we possibly can be for the pressures over the winter. We've put in uh, uh, sufficient funds, £250 million worth of capital spending to get 900 extra beds in hospital. We've got 10,000 additional virtual beds uh, as well. So we're doing what we can. We've got more staff in the NHS, more money in the NHS than at any time in its history. But at this particular moment, this outlier of a negotiation, because that's what it is, mm. across the rest of the public sector, there have been sensible settlements. But for one group to come forward and say it's 35 per cent, I'm not aware that they've moved from that. And to now walk away from the uh, negotiating table at a time that they know will cause maximum distress to the okay. public, I think is deeply regrettable. Well, Mr Stride, we, we all know that over a million operations have been cancelled um, since the, the, these actions began, and there'll be many more mm. now. We also know that there are... Um, accident and emergency units. There's one in Charlton which is closing its doors for the duration of the strike, so people will have to go elsewhere. And I have to say that the spokesperson for the BMA about an hour and a half ago was pushed very hard by my colleague Charlotte here on the impact mm. on patients of all of this. And she strenuously denied that today's action and any of the strike action that the junior doctors have taken or will take has any actual impact on patients. What would you say to that? Well, I, I, I can't possibly accept that. That's to suggest that if we didn't have the junior doctors, it wouldn't make any difference to the quality of the health service that we provide. And clearly, that's an absurd uh, suggestion. I think she's they saying, have a on a, very... sorry to interrupt, I think she was uh, yeah. making the point that on a temporary basis, the consultants step in. So there are measures yeah. in place. And because of the measures in place, therefore, patients aren't impacted, was the point she was making. Well, no, I think it inevitably has an impact. This, this is a period of the year when staffing pressures... Uh, are increased for at least two reasons. One is that people are taking time off, quite rightly, to be with their loved ones over Christmas. And secondly, the uh, winter temperatures uh, kick in and people have ailments that they don't have when the, uh, when, when the weather is, is better and more, more benign. And I think to walk away from the table as the VMA have uh, at the moment, at this particular moment, they know that this is going to be causing maximum disruption, maximum... Uh, pain and difficulty for many people, some of them very vulnerable, I think is just deeply regrettable. But it Are is you prepared the... to increase the offer in any way, shape or form? Well, because I, it is the government's well, Richard, responsibility I... to sort this out, isn't it? Yeah, well, well, well Richard, absolutely. I, look, we, we have been negotiating in good faith, as we have with other unions and representatives right across the public sector. 
We've arrived at this situation now where we've got settlements right across the public sector. But in this one case of the junior doctors who have been holding out for 35% at a time where we've been pushing very hard to get inflation down, for example, uh, it has just not been the right, right approach on their part. And we need them to re-engage. Can I just say very quickly, Richard, on inflation, of course, we've just had the inflation statistics out this morning and it's down to 3.9%, falling faster than many had expected. We've over halved it over this year. And that is one of the fruits of having taken a responsible attitude right. towards well, that public is good sector pay. Although, and we'll all benefit from that. Although food inflation is still at 9.2%, you know, these figures still mean that prices are going up. It's still increasingly difficult for people. Yes, absolutely. And that's why my department has been engaged in um, billions of pounds worth of cost of living payments, for example, to 8 million low income households, 900 pounds over the year, 150 pounds to 6 million disabled people. Uh, the winter uh, fuel payment that we're, um, we've just provided to 11 million payments to pensioners worth between five and 600 pounds, put the national living wage uh, up as of next April, we put it up a lot uh, last April as well. These are all things that we're doing to target support uh, to those that really, really need it. But my point on inflation is this is a turning point for the economy.